Hello, everyone. This is Claire at Student RDH. Um, I see some of you are already here. Let me quickly see. We have Lizbeth, Lindsay, Cece, Zoe, Nancy. Um, who else do we have over here? Erin, Shannon, Zina, Renee, Emily, Jacqueline, Ashley, Jessica, Sandra, Kai, um, Mona, Felicia, Carly. Some of you, I do not see your name. If you can put it on the chat, that would be great. I'd love to do shout outs. Gabriella, Maddie, um, there's Galaxy S9. I'm sure that's not a name. And Junia, Tali, Jenny. Uh, we also have iPhone, that's Shelly. Uh, Medina, Caitlin, Michaela, um, Shokuria, Tina, Olivia, Devin. So guys, thanks you for being here, guys. My name is Claire. I am the founder of Student RDH. Uh, I'm not sure if you have seen my face yet because I probably work a lot more behind the scenes um, that, you know, you probably not exactly know what I look like, but this is me. We are going to have an awesome session today because we are going to learn more about the ADEX exam. Okay, so we have two guest speakers over here. And I know there is Barbara Chayo and we have uh, Deidra who's gonna join us today. So um, let me see, I'm gonna give Barbara the co-host permission and I'm gonna also do right now, let's see if I can find Deidra Russell over here, the co-host permission. Now, while I do this, I want to understand, ladies and gentlemen, when are you taking your ADEX exam? Is that this month? Is it next month? Did it already happen? Maybe we have Anthony who says September 1st, Stephen, August 14th. We have uh, Senekins, August 11th. Okay, Brittany, not sure yet, September, November. Oh, okay. So we have a lot of you who are taking it, well, soon, about two months from, uh, two weeks from now, and a lot of you who are taking it also in September. Okay, so thank you for sharing with all of them. Um, Hannah is actually, you're, are you a first year student? Because you say sometime next year. Awesome, anybody here is a first year student? Anybody here is a first year student? Me, Tina, okay, anybody else? Anybody, Shelby, perfect, great. So I just wanna make sure that our co-hosts, which are two wonderful students who actually just took their boards, okay, they want to talk to you about their experience. It is going to be just about their experience that they have seen because as you can see, uh, the ADEX exam has changed, right? Were you all supposed to take the clinical inpatient exam and did you have a patient already? You can put it on the chat, you can say yes or no because I know when I was a student, that was like the hardest thing to do, to find a patient. Um, Elaine is, hi Claire, this is Elaine from Michigan taking in September, I love it. Um, and Zoe, yes, this is, this is what I look like every day. Um, <laughs> I work again a lot behind the scenes and uh, you know, I'm just always trying to be there to create, have more content for you guys and to be a helpful resource. So some of you, a lot of you had patients already, Heather, Haley, can you tell me what it feels like to have a patient, but then you're like, I can't, I can't do this patient exam anymore. How, what did you feel when they're like, we're going to do a mannequin exam now? Did you feel good about it? Were you disappointed? Chelsea, you said she got, my patient got pregnant, so it worked out. That's really good. Anthony, you're like, it feels good. Um, Heather, you're saying you feel like you let the patient down, which is really true because at the same time, you wanted them to be an awesome patient or you wanted to provide service for them. However, you were not able to. So I totally get that. Um, and you, uh, who said, Maddie's saying, your patient was really looking forward to have her teeth clean, and that is really true as well. Okay, Whew. but Jacqueline said, I'm relieved. And you, you said, your cousin who was a patient was kind of unreliable. You know, those are the things that we don't have to worry when we have a mannequin, when we have a fake person sitting in front of us, they're gonna be there, and it's not our job to bring them into the clinic. So it's gonna work out. 
right? So um, we have about 125 students here. We are exactly at 11 a.m. EST. We are recording this with the permission of our wonderful students or are you guys new grad um, who just took the exam, um, ADEX exam here who want to tell you about what it feels like to take it from their own experience. They even prepared a little PowerPoint for you guys and they're gonna talk about it. Their name is Deidre Russell and Barbara Chayo. I believe they are from the Florida region. I don't know if you are both in the same school and um you know we are going to let them talk really soon all right so um harpy thank uh, thank you i really love seeing you over here so barbara and deidra if you are here i know you're here because i give you the co-host permission can you please uh, give me a little shout out on the text saying if you are ready you can say ready and i know when we're going to start okay so um, again, friends, we have amazing students here who literally volunteer to say, hey, I have something to share with the students. I would love to talk about the mannequin exam because I went through this and I know it can help hundreds, thousands of more students out there who are taking the ADEX examination. So um, Barbara says, hello, Claire, and hello, everyone. Uh, Barbara. Can you put that onto everybody? Okay, everyone in the meeting, if you make a chat, you can have the option of either putting it um, under me privately or under someone else, or you can put it out there. So, perfect. I see that you are ready as well. Okay, so Barbara and Deidre. Can you, both of us, um, both of you come on camera and I'm going to ask you to talk about yourself for a second. So hello, Barbara, and hello, Jaydra. Thank you so much for being here today. Hello, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. My name is Deidre Russell, and I am a recent graduate of the Dental Hygiene Program at Miami Dade College. Oh. And I have completed all four of my board exams. Shout out to Claire because a student already age, and it was a great experience doing the ADEX exam. And I am glad to share my experience with you all. Great! Hey, listen to this. Thank you. <laughs> <That's> so cute. <laughs> all Thank right. You. Thank you, Deidre. So you graduated already. Is that correct? Yes, I graduated already. Me and Barbara, we are in the, we, we did go to the same school. Oh, you did? Okay, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you for introducing yourself. Uh, let's hear a little hello from Barbara. Hello, everybody. So my name is Barbara Chayo, and I was on the same program than Deidre. We were like best classmates. Okay. We went through all of it together. <laughs> so crying, laughing, um, bored. So I'm very happy to share also my experience because Deidre and I, we got different experience. We weren't, we weren't in the same room. So I'm very happy um, to share that and to help anybody. Uh, I know how stressful it is and um, hope you guys are gonna like it. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. hope you guys enjoy. We're here to guide you through, calm down your nerves. <laughs> <laughs> Great. So, okay, congratulations for being done and having done everything successfully. And again, on behalf of everybody at Student RDH, I'm very thankful to have some real student experience because I personally went to the real clinical patient. I graduated in Boston, which is on the East Coast. I did take the ADEX exam. I also took the West Coast exam just because I want to be an expert in examination. But this is so new, right? It happened this year, am I correct? Yes, it happened this year, yes. And do we know if it's gonna continue next year or not yet? Not yet. Uh, in Florida, the law is until September 1st. Okay. To do the patient, the mannequin exam. Then they go back to the patient uh, clinical exam. We don't mm -hmm. know if the governor is gonna change it yet. Okay. But as far as for me, mm -hmm. I, it was a relief because I didn't have patient. Mm. And it was as well. Yeah, I, I didn't have a patient as well. It w I, I felt very overwhelmed. So when I heard that they were sticking with the mannequin, I was like, awesome. Because I was stressed about finding the right patient. So it was like brick of loads off my shoulder. So. <laughs> and how, uh, when did that happen? That announcement saying, hey guys, we're going to switch this examination. What month was that? I would say it probably happened around April or May because 
because our emergency evacuation at our school, it happened around March. It happened when we were dealing with patients and they set off the alarm and all of us had to evacuate from Miami Dade College. And then maybe like around April or maybe around May, that's when we started to do like petitions to tell the governor to give us like a temporary license or something. But then that's when they were like, we will just stick with the mannequin. I see. So you yeah. had to petition. Yeah, there was a petition because you know how at first, like there were the dental hygiene profession, it was furloughed. You know, everyone was out of business for a second. Yeah. So everyone was like, what's going to happen with the class of 2020? Like they need to start working too and all that stuff. So maybe give them a temporary license or something. But eventually CDC, they came up with, let's just give them the mannequin. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. But also what happened is there was a petition for us. Mm -hmm. for students but on the other hand there was already the hygienist that has already graduated yeah graduated they were against about it they were against it because they, they thought it wasn't there the whole process yeah. and there was like thousand and thousand signatures so it was really hard for us oh, okay. and yeah, we didn't know what was happening all right well ladies you made it happen it was a collective effort not just one person, but everybody who shared their concern. And I'm just so relieved for you. I'm just like, I'm just happy. I'm just happy that it's all done and you are soon to be, are you working yet or, or the process of getting your license? What's the process happen? of getting my license? I finally got my license number. And now this week, I'm just going to be sending out my resume Woo! and applying. Yes. Yes. I'm excited. Yes. I love it. Yes. What about you, Barbara? I still have to take <laughs> two boards. Okay. Um, and I'm working on it right now, but I'm really stressed. So I'm trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was very tough because at first, um, most of us, we would have been done way earlier, but you know how testing sites, they were just closed because the pandemic was getting worse. Right. So some people right. had to end up putting their exam to August and September when they could have been done a long time right. ago. So, okay. Okay. All right. So ladies, I'm going to let you roll with your presentation. And then in the meantime, I'm going to ask you guys. We are gonna let them do their presentation. And if you have a comment or if you have a question, please put it on the chat because I'm gonna be the moderator. I'm gonna take notes. And at the end, we're gonna to toss those questions back to our students, wonderful new grad actually, um, who are going to share their experience. Does that work for everybody? So instead of asking all the questions, just put them on the chat. I will make sure that we see them, okay? So ladies, if you are ready, I'm gonna let you roll with your presentation. All right. Thank you. And yeah, I mean, really, we are so thankful because you even prepared a PowerPoint presentation for all the students, uh, really making it useful. I think everybody who's joining here for an hour or less are going to walk away with so many things because nobody really talks about it, right? Yeah, no one really talks about it. I'm yeah, grateful that you created this like platform. You were blinded. Like, you didn't have any directions. Like, I'm going to read the No manual, direction. But, yeah. okay. Perfect. So do you know how to share your screen? If you are ready, you are free to free to do so. Let me see if I can share, yeah, so. I'll share it. Thank you. You are a pro at this already. Yes. <laughs> All right. All right. So are we ready? Yes, we are. Now I'm ready. Everybody All right, so ready. Put, it yet. put a yes in the chat. That's how we know it. Perfect. All right, so we are off. All right, the ADIX Patient Mannequin Exam by Barbara Child and Teacher Russell. All right, so what to expect? You are going to expect the feeling of peace and confusion. I'm going to let Barbara explain the peace part. Okay, so it was peaceful because we got lucky enough that our school holds the exam. We worked in that school for two years. We know the clinic. We know the seats. We know where to put the ultrasonic in. So, so we were like a little bit confused because we didn't know what to expect, but as well as we were all so relaxed because we knew that we will head out into our school and the right. parking spot and all that. What about right. you, Deidre? How did you feel? Yeah, the, the same as well. Um, I felt very at peace because one, like maybe most of you, just like me, you're already finished with your written exam. So this is the only exam that you have to complete. So you're not too stressed. And also if you're heading to your same clinic to take your exam, you already know where to park. You know, you already know where to go. 
and the confusion as well. I did not know what to, what to expect with the mannequin. I did not know what like the transition would be to checking in, checking out, will my chair work? So that is where all of my confusion is coming from. And maybe you guys feel the same way as well. So before the exam day, the CDCA, they are going to email you a confirmation for a Zoom meeting for orientation. So we're basically the pre-orientation, but we're gonna be a little bit better because we're gonna give you the full details. But the CDCA, they're gonna like run through their guidelines, their policies, and they're just gonna tell you how they construct the exam. But us over here, we're the pre-orientation. So we're gonna give you all the best details as best as we can. So maybe like maybe a week before or like three days before your exam, check your email by CDCA to let you know about their Zoom meeting for the orientation. All right, Barbara, tips on exam day. So um, that was my experience, and that's the, also the experience of Deidre. I ate a light breakfast. I ate eggs before just to be sure that I will not be able, I will not be craving something during the exam. So I ate a little bit, um, but again, that's because I'm okay with eggs. Right. But make sure you eat light or you don't want to eat anything. That's fine yeah. also. Me, do I didn't eat anything. Makes, do whatever works for you. Whatever works for you. I didn't eat anything because I'm too nervous. My stomach is already churning. So I decided not to eat anything. But if you're someone that gets very cranky, eat something. But if you're nervous, you don't have to eat anything. Just eat at something after you're done with your exam. Use the restroom before going into the exam, just to be sure. Yes, and drink plenty of water to replenish your brain you know so you can feel refreshed it can help you wake up and then also another good thing that i enjoyed through this experience is carpooling with classmates me and barbara we actually carpooled and we actually like were bending to each other trying to get our stress out our nerves out just by you know stressing on each other but also being positive to one another so if you can carpool with one of your classmates go for it you guys can have fun together have a nice car ride going and coming back and then just have good conversation with one another and also, while I carpool with Deidre, uh, we were asking each other questions. Did you forget this? Did you bring this? Uh, what, did you, what did you do this morning? We, we, you know, we were asking questions just to make sure that the stress will be a little bit lower and we were singing. So whatever works. Whatever works. But carpooling is a great, great yeah. uh, stress relief. Right, because if you're driving in the car by yourself, you're just going to be so nervous. But if you have somebody there with you, you could just talk it out, talk out your stress, you know. That's always a good tip. And also, arrive an hour early. It's always good to be an early bird. And also, I heard, like, from experience where there were some examiners, examinees, where they said that when they arrived early, they actually got to start the exam early because everyone who was in that time slot was able to go in and start the exam early. So always arrive an hour early. You may never know what can happen, but also like if you like arrive 30 minutes, you know, that's not enough room for just in case you made a mistake. So even if you're going to arrive an hour and a half early to always make room for mistakes, like if you got forgot something at home, you know, you can, you know, sit in the lobby and calm yourself down. So always arrive early. Barbara, bag of supplies. And then you make sure you have, um, everything you packed with you the day before. So, you know, you check. I did a list where I will check everything that I mm -hmm. have in my bag to make sure everything I have was into my bag. Yes. And as I say, when I came into the car with Deidre, we were checking on each other. Did you bring that? Did you do that? I brought a bottle of water. We were, you know, we got our back. Do you want food? Do you want this and that? So, you know. Yes. That's what a true friend is for. I love it. Yeah. So honestly, if you could just go in with friends, do it. I loved it. It was great. Me and Barbara, we weren't too nervous once we had each other by each other's side. So. All right. What to bring? You're going to bring two IDs and the CDCA in the Zoom meeting, they're going to tell you that bring two IDs. You cannot go wrong with a passport and your driver's license. That is what I took. But also, if you have a school ID with your picture and your um, signature, that is fine as well. And I believe you can take a credit card or a debit card as long as there's a signature in the back. And then make sure you bring your instrument cassettes. There is no limit, but obviously you just need one. I ended up bringing 
more than I needed just in case, because I'm an in case person. Anything could go wrong. Also, well, I used three. So <laughs> I brought everything. <laughs> you know? Yes, I brought more than I needed. And then you need to bring your ultrasonics, magneto or piezo. Our chair, we had the magneto. Bring your loops. Always use your light. The light really helped out. And then you have your chair light as well. Pens, pencils. You most likely need your pens. Um, we didn't use pencils at all. Bring your clipboard. I didn't really use a clipboard because I had a mobile cabinet right there, a mobile countertop. It was right there. But, you know, all clinics are different. They probably wouldn't have like a mobile countertop near you. And your sequential number, that's going to be on the next slide. I'm going to show you what that is. And extra items, it's up to you. But really, the main supplies that you need are your cassettes, your ultrasonics, your loops, and positivity. You really don't need a big, big bag, honestly. The, the, for the mannequin exam, you don't need to bring a lot of stuff versus the actual live patient exam. And also bring positivity. If you go in being nervous and negative, you already put yourself at a deduction. So go in there with a smile, be positive, and with a good peace of mind. Also, try to bring a big bag because you're going to put it in the countertop. There was mm -hmm. no lockers for us. Yeah. So, you know, bring a bottle of water. Obviously, there will be no food into the clinic. Mm -hmm. uh, but don't bring, like, expensive stuff or yeah. a bag or something like that. Just bring, like, a tote bag or a big bag and you put all your stuff in there. Yeah, we had no lockers. We had to put everything that's on the countertop in the operatory that you're in. So your belongings will always be with you. You won't keep them in the lobby. There's no locker. They're going to be right by your side, like on the counter, wherever your operatory is. Okay. So the sequential number, you guys probably questioned, what is the sequential number? This is basically like an ID number just for them to identify you. So what you could do is you can either print it out or, sh or show it on your phone. And the funny thing is, when I was already parked in the parking lot, Barbara said, do you have your sequential number? I'm like, what? What is the sequential number? I did not know we had to show that. So thank goodness she was there. She was like, I'll just log in for you. And then she showed it to me. So basically, as you can see where the red arrow is, that will be your sequential number. And it's a three digit number. And you just log on to your CDCA online account and it'll be right there where you're registered for your exams. So make sure you see it. It's right under patient treatment, clinical examination, your sequential number. And then you can also see the facility where you'll be assigned at. I was at Miami-Dade College. And then you'll see the date of your exam under that. And then you're gonna see what time you're supposed to come in. Me and Barbara, we had ours for 10.30 a.m. We were actually the last group. So don't fret. It's all on your CDCA account. You'll see your sequential right there. You can print it out or just show it on your phone. Very easy to find. All right, Barbara. What was the preparation like? Okay, so basically you're gonna check in. There, when you're gonna check in, you're gonna, like there was a wait, waiting room. Yes. So we were all waiting there. And then there is a man or woman that's gonna come and gonna say, group at 10 30 a.m can you please come in come in so you're gonna come in they're gonna check your sequential number and mm -hmm. your id yes i did sorry and they're gonna take you to your operatory yes. and then they're gonna let you see if everything's work yes so your chair is already set up they decontaminate everything the mannequin is already set up already you set up you don't have to set up the mannequin yeah, the only thing that you're gonna have to set up is of course your PPE mm -hmm. and your cassette. The barrier is already done. Mm -hmm. You just have to put the mandible in and to put the B. Yeah, and then they're gonna supply you with so many stuff. Like you'll see on the little tray, the patient bid, they'll give you gowns, masks, a face shield. They'll give you flaws. You're gonna see the air water syringes, the suction. And all you have to do is just place them in the chair. And with your PPE, make sure you still wear your loops. They didn't get in trouble, but they were, but the examinees, they went up to some of the ex um, the examinees, the examiners went up to examinees and told them, you still need to wear your loops. They didn't have their loops, so they had to end up putting on their face shields. But make sure you still wear your loops. They are facial, required. Facial wasn't mandatory. Yeah. You can wear it or no, it's up to you. Up to but you. of course the PPE was mandatory. Um, and also the section is already inside the mannequin. You don't, you know, they give you another one 
an extra one, mm -hmm. but it's already in the mannequin inside mm -hmm. of the mouth. Yeah. Yes. So all your PPs require the gloves, the mask, and the loops. And then the paperwork. They're going to come in with the paperwork with the little stickers, and we will discuss paperwork some more on the next slide. All right, so the paperwork, the good news is it is only one form. That is it. It is not three forms, four, five. It is just one piece of form, and that was a great relief because that's what I was stressing on the most. I was like, where am I going to write my information? Where am I going to do this? You know, it's easy and to understand. It's, it's so great. easy to understand. So as you can see at the top right, you see the candidate where you can place your ID sticker there. They're going to come in with a whole bunch of stickers, and they're going to tell you to place it there. And then on this form, all it is is just calculus detection, scaling, and probing. As you can see on the quadrant assignment, they're only going to assign you on the mandible. They're only going to give you the left or the right. And they assign me the lower left. And then they're going to tell you to circle which version that you have because the, the forms, they're actually different colors. You know, there's going to be pink. There's going to be yellow. I think some are going to have blue. And then for the, for the calculus removal at the top, they are going to have those boxes filled out already. Those are the teeth that you have to make sure that you scale properly because they're going to check those. And then for this, in the next section, in the subgingival calculus detection findings, they're already going to assign you the four teeth. So it's up to you to check yes or no. Everything will be assigned to you. And then for the probe measurement findings on the, on the third section at the bottom, they're going to assign you the two teeth. And then when you do the probing, you just have to write the numbers in the boxes. Everything is assigned to you. You don't have to question anything. Do I choose this, this two? Do they want me to choose this one, this quadrant? No, everything will be filled in for you. And that was the greatest thing for me on this exam. So it's only three exercises, mm -hmm. and you're going to have to do it in an order because it's better. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, the CDCA, when you're going to have the meeting with them, they're going to explain you that. Yeah. The only thing that they're going to write for you is on the top right, the mm -hmm. examiner number. Uh, they're going to fill that out for you. My form was already circled. I got mm -hmm. E and the lower left too. Make sure that you're working on the lower left if you get the lower left. Yes. Always make sure. Don't go cross-eyed on the exam. <laughs> you Take know. time. And, and it's only one quadrant. It's not one quadrant and two teeth. It's literally just one quadrant and they're going to have the teeth filled out. And then for the probing, just two teeth. And then for the calculus detection, just four teeth and it's on the maxilla. The maxilla, it'll be everything for calculus detection. For the probing, it's going to be on the same quadrant that you scaled. Very simple. Everything is assigned to you. Barbara, the mannequin. The mannequin. It was so great to see that type of face on your chair. <laughs> yes. It was such a relief. So I saw the mannequin. That's amazing. He or she doesn't gag, <laughs> doesn't ask you questions, doesn't sit on the section, doesn't bother you, doesn't move, doesn't have hypertension, medical history, None whatever, of that. whatever. So it was fun. Um, I found it's easy to move in. I didn't have any difficulties to get that in, probably because I was forcing with my elbow and I was racing with my elbow on the face. Um, but again, so you're gonna have your mandible handing out to you in a bag. You're gonna take it out from the bag and you're gonna slide in. If you need help, ask to the examiner. They're gonna be there for you. You can ask if you need help. Don't be shy. They're gonna, you're gonna have to place it in the mouth. It's gonna stick like a magnet. Just like a magnet. And if you need help again, the examiner will guide you where to place it. And then they're gonna tell you to begin the exam. Mm -hmm. And then also for the mannequin, it's just for the mandible. The, the maxilla is already gonna be there. It's literally just the mandible that they have on the baggie on your counter. And they just tell you to slip it out and put it in the mouth. And that's it. It's literally just like a denture, but for the mannequin. You pop it in and you pop it out. And that's it. The mannequin is very simple. But my experience with um, um, versus Barbara's is very different. My mannequin's head was very hard to turn. So I don't know if you guys want to like lift weights, you know, the morning of, because it was very hard to turn. When I had to do the surfaces away, 
oh my goodness, that mannequin's head. It was very difficult. But other than that, I give it a 10 out of 10. Great experience working with the mannequin. All right, so for the exam time, you do the calculus detection, scaling, and probing. So my experience with the calculus detection, this is the same experience for everyone else. I could not tell if there was calculus there or not. I don't know if the material was very cheap. I just couldn't tell. And then obviously, as you see in the form over here, in the second section for the calculus detection, I put a lot of no's. I really did not feel any calculus there. And I ended up having yes for one surface. And that's only because in my mind, I was like, okay, I have no for everything. So maybe for this surface, I should put yes. But honestly, I did not feel any calculus for mine. But yes, in the second section, as you could see, if you see yes, if you feel, if you feel calculus, you click yes. And if you don't feel it, you just put no. Barbara? So concerning the subgingival calculus, qualify, the qualifying subgingival calculus, I felt the same way than Deidre. And I think it was the harder, hardest exercise to do. Uh, most of us, we didn't really think anything except of roughness. Mm -hmm. So take your explorer, try to go gently in. Gently. And, um, you know, if Hope you feel best. yes, put yes. If you feel no, put no. Put no. But don't, don't, don't hesitate too much. I think I took 20, 25 minutes to do that. Uh, we all felt the same way. Mm -hmm. For me, I had many yes compared to no. Uh, but, you know, again, it's, that was the hardest exercise. You yeah. can say it. And, and then for the scaling, oh yes. And then they give you two hours. It is just two hours. But since we have the mannequin, I feel like you can finish less than that. I believe I finished in 35 minutes. And then the only reason I ended up using the full two hours because there was a classmate in the same operatory as mine. And I was wondering why he was taking so long. So I was like, you know what, maybe I'll just sit and I'll just keep working on scaling, making sure my pro measurements are okay. But you'll actually finish way less, way less than an hour. And then for the scaling, the calculus is black. You know, so... I hand scaled most of the time. To me, the ultrasonic, it barely worked. And then do not be alarmed if you do end up scaling or using the ultrasonic. If you see white debris, that is just the tooth. It is okay. The examiners, they do not deduct any points because I feel like I made some teeth have a little bit of abrasion, a fraction. That's how cheap to be the material felt. But I hand scaled most of the time. The only time I used the ultrasonic was probably like to take out the debris, the black calculus out. And then another tip that I did use, even though you didn't have to use it, I did use a floss to remove some of the black debris of the calculus. So I got a completely different experience. For me, I use most of the time, probably 40 minutes, 45 minutes, the ultrasonic. I went to the highest power first mm -hmm. and then to the lowest power, but I was using a lot of the ultrasonic. And then I went scaling, but again, our instruments were so sharp, they were so brand sharp. new, that we will take out, the, we'll scale the tooth structure out. Mm -hmm. They will come out. Um, but as Deidre say, it's okay, because you're not graded on um, you, trauma. tissue trauma or tooth trauma. And my tips were, I will take out my probe, and I will slightly lift up the gingiva mm -hmm. of the mannequin to be sure there was no nope. uh, black debris inside. Nothing. What you have to know is that on the mandible, it's going to be black. The calculus is going to be black. On and calculus detection, yeah, exactly. On calculus detection, it's not going to be black at all. You're not going to be able to see it, even if you pull out the, the, the gum a little bit. And I wouldn't recommend to do it because then there's gonna be someone else behind you that's gonna take the exam and is gonna have to do the calculus detection. Right. So, so but that's how I felt. I scaled, when I scaled the interiors, I would see that white debris come out and I would be like, oh my gosh, what is that? Did they put two type of calculus in there, material? Yeah. No, it was the tooth structure. That's all it is. I literally that's did a preparation on the tooth, <laughs> but it's fine. It is fine. You're going to have gingiva, uh, tissue trauma. It is perfectly fine. Just perfectly fine. concentrate. Take everything out on this quadrant. I didn't even look at which surface I have 
the calculation on the exercise, I just took everything out of uh, the lower left quadrant. Yes. And then the greatest thing about this exam, no anesthesia, like Barbara said, the patient is alive, you know, it's just a mannequin, so there's no anesthesia, there is no polishing, no BP, no subgingival irrigation, no flossing, and no tissue trauma deduction, and no tooth trauma deduction. None of that. You know, this is only a three-part exam. They just um, mark you for your probing, your scaling, and your calculus detection. That's all this exam is about. I know it sounds too good to be true, but this is what this exam is about. And then you're going to have the probing. Yes, the probing. So the probing, the probing you're going to have two teeth. I believe I got um, 28 or 29 and an anterior tooth, 23. Um, so um, again, they, give, they let you uh, one millimeter above or one mi millimeter under. Um, difference find this score you know uh, if you find a four and it's a five then you're gonna have the point it's fine but if you have a five and it's was seven then you're gonna have uh, points off and I believe it's 5.5 or 6.5 points off I guess for, there. for a surface so the probing um, my experience it's very easy to to feel it's like you know, probing on the type on it, it feels like it was on a patient, to be honest. Um, but I had the tissue trauma. Right. So for me, I was like, uh oh. Right, you probably made it worse because we were really digging in those gums, you know. So. Exactly. So my advice to you, make sure you don't do tissue trauma on those teeth that you have to probe. Um, then it's going to be easier for you because at the end, I didn't know if with the edge of the gingiva, with the papilla, yeah. dental papilla. <laughs> so, yes. yes, but you will feel the jump feeling. You will feel it. It feels just like the actual gums. Because I know some people are questioning, oh my goodness, how will I know? Because since it's a mannequin, is it going to feel like the real thing? It felt like the real thing to me. You know, I felt the resistance. So, mm -hmm. Okay. And now for the checkout, the two hours, they're going to go by very quick. So all you have to do is um, call the examiner, you raise your hand, I raise my hand, and then they come to you, and then they're just gonna tell you to pull out the mandible, and then they're gonna give you your sticker that has like your labeling, all your number information on it, on the bottom of the mandible. And then you're gonna place it in the bag. And then afterwards, on their tablet, you're gonna transfer everything that you had on this form onto their tablet. So whatever info that you have for the calculus detection, it, they have it mapped out the same exact way on their tablet. So if you have yes on the mesial of tooth number four, you put yes on theirs and so forth on all the four teeth that they assign to you. And it's the same thing for the probe measurements. And when you're done put inputting all your numbers, they're going to ask you to check and make sure that they inputted their numbers incorrectly because my examiner, he by accident, like I said eight and he ended up putting nine. So make sure you double check and make sure like everything is correct from what you have on your form. It's pretty simple, it's very easy. And then once they're done, you clean up and you leave and you just go be great and don't stress too much. You're gonna <laughs> come after one hour of your exam to tell you you have one hour to perform still. And then they're gonna come 15 minutes before and they're gonna tell you you have 15 minutes uh, left. So in those 15 minutes, if you haven't done your probing, do the probing. Okay, and the idea for you, whatever question you, you need, or you need to ask, uh, don't be shy to ask for help again. Um, also, when they say time is up, you have to drop everything. Instrument, pen, everything. You don't have to touch anything. They're not joking with that. They say time is up, time is up. You drop everything. Yes, and yes, you just clean up. And then you just, you know, it's a very calming atmosphere. It's not chaotic at all. You know, it's not a lot of people, if anything, I believe it's maybe like 15 examinees that are in there with you. And there's like in total of three examiners that are there. So there is nothing to stress about, nothing to be worried about. Someone will be there to help you and to guide you. You know, yes, it's an exam, but like at the same time, you could still talk to whoever's next to you. Obviously not talk so loud, but... You know, you can calm each other's nerves. No one's going to tell you, quiet, this is an exam. 
you know, you could work with each other, help each other out and just give advice to one another. So I want to give you my experience about that. Um, in my room, I didn't have any uh, of my classmates in my clinic uh, with me during the exam. So I guess there was a dentist and two other hygienists that were coming from another school. And so I was the only one very familiar with this clinic. And so they were completely lost with where to put the ultrasonic, where to find the pressure uh, bottom for the water to come out, um, the light, they couldn't find the bottom to light up the lights. So I asked to the examiner, hey, I've been to this school for two years. Can I please help them just to set up? And they were so grateful. You're going to feel good about yourself, and they're going to remember you. So I helped them out. I answered their question. And once we were done with the, with the, with the exam, they really thanked me. Yeah. So it was really nice. Please, if you have the opportunity and if you can help, do it. Because everyone is in the same boat as in this mm -hmm. particular situation and get your get each other's back that's what i'm saying and then after all this is done you pass yay so me and barbara we ended up finding out the next day this is actually like a two-day weekend process so those who took it on saturday they had to wait for two days because we all found out on monday so obviously right after the last group whatever the last day of the exam is you're gonna find out the next day and it was a big relief because obviously like when we were done with the exam we were like oh my goodness i i shaved off the tooth i don't know if i let the cactus there we were all nervous because since we were at the school that we were at we saw our classmates so we all spoke with each other in groups and we were a little bit nervous but once monday came oh my goodness we all found out so i'm seeing since they're doing so they're since they're making the mannequin exam a saturday and sunday it looks like you most likely will end up finding out on a monday also so. um for us uh deidre and i for religious purposes we couldn't take it on a saturday so we made sure if it happens for you if it's you if you're in the same case mm -hmm. please email the cdca Mm -hmm. Tell them that for religious purposes, you need to take it on Sunday or on Saturday. I don't know. Um, and they will make you the, they will make the adjustment for you, for you, they will yes. for you on a Sunday. So for us, it worked out perfectly. Perfectly fine. They will accommodate for you. So send out your emails. I don't know if all dentists in the clinic do it, but like the dentist in our clinic, she was the one that made arrangements for that and reached out to the CDCA. So if your dentist does that, make sure you reach out to your dentist, email them and let them know. And then they can contact CDCA for you. And that was our experience. And also uh, our class, all of our classmates passed the exam. So we were all very happy about it. They made sure that they have another session in Miami-Dade College in August for the one that if we could have failed, just to make sure we can take again the patient mannequin exam. But that did not happen, thank God. <laughs> and so, you know, it's always good to have another option after that. Yes. Because this is the best way to go. The patient, the patient mannequin exam, you're going to love it. Trust yes, me. Yes, you're going to love it. If this beats the live patient exam by far. You guys will love it. You will enjoy it. So don't be stressed. It's not a stressful atmosphere. Be positive, And I know you guys will pass. All of you guys in this webinar right here are going to pass for sure. Claim it. Visualize it. 200 of us. Yes, 200. 200, yes. everybody. Yes. And that it's was our clinic. experience. You not are only clinic. clinic, not only clinic, also the theory part. I mean, you, we have to say it was clear. We're so well prepared. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Claire. All right. Well, ladies, this has been wonderful. We have so many questions. So many people were saying thank you for all the information. What you have done really is just popping literally 200 here students and more because a lot of them saying have clinic all those things so we are recording it as well and we have facebook live going on we have instagram live going on everybody is trying to absorb this because again this is new for all of us you're explaining all of this i think make everybody a lot more calmer like guys put it on the chat do you feel a little bit more confident now you can say yes if you are a little bit more confident because you have a little bit more information and we have a lot of yes coming in in the chat thank you so much 
Now, ladies, are you ready for some questions? Because it was a lot, and I was trying to keep up with this as you were talking. Is that okay? okay. Uh, Sorry. We are ready. Here. Say that again, Barbara. I would like to add something for girls. Of course. Uh, you can wear nail polish. You can wear it. Please don't come to the clinic with the long nails. <laughs> you can wear color. You can wear jewelry. But, yeah. you know, as soon as it's a little bit short, you know. They're, they're not, not too gonna, flashy. And not too flashy. Make, uh, tied up your hair, you know, all those things that make sense. But yes. Wow. So you are allowed nail polish. That's yes. right. Wow to me. <laughs> Yes. And then you're going to ask the questions in the Zoom meeting that the CDCA is going to give. They okay. say you could wear it, but it can't be too flashy, you know, so. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. Okay. I learned so much already. So here are some questions for you ladies. Okay. Okay. So uh, I think you talked already about how long it takes you to get the results, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the general answer would be how long would you say? Honestly, I would say it, it depends, I guess, whenever that weekend period of the exam is because I'm seeing that everyone's doing a two day weekend. They're putting it on Saturday and Sunday. So once Saturday and Sunday is finished, they'll probably give you the results on Monday. Okay. Whenever so the last group of people are finished. So you'll find days. out literally, yeah, two days. Yeah, depending on where you are. Okay, so yeah. that's awesome. I think everybody wants to know ASAP, right? It's not right on right. the spot, but it's going to be really soon. We yes. had a question earlier. Do you buy your mannequin? Nope, you nope. do not buy the mannequin. Once you walk into the clinic, the mannequin is waiting for you right there in the chair. Okay. Because you already have pay on the CDCA. The fees. Right. Okay. And okay. you will find out your result on CDCA. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, so Shannon saying our instructor told us that they weren't grading on size, so it could take more weeks. And again, thank you for sharing your experience. Maybe, you know, depends on the side the examiners but you know i think we just have confirmation that is pretty quick anyhow but thank you so much sharon for sharing um here uh how fast do you get a date when you fill out your application i i think you get the date the week before your exam because okay. i ended up paying and then none of us saw like when our information is so if you have your exam next week you should probably be getting it around this week or maybe even you can even check three days before. Okay. So again, I think I'll hope that answers that. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go fast to the questions because we had a lot and thank okay. you again for really sharing your, your real knowledge no here. Problem. What is the price? How much? What is the price? Yeah. 445. How much? What did you say, Barbara? 445. Yeah. Around there. Yes. 445. Yes. The same price than the, and the 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 national yeah exam. yeah the same right. price yeah. so around four fifty yeah around there yes Ooh, quite yeah. expensive <laughs> yeah, it is very expensive and if you see nine hundred and ninety five or something like that that's because you're paying for the clinical exam and the OSCE combined exactly and also you have to pay for I mean we had to pay an extra one sixty bucks for our instrument because we wanted. Uh, sharp instrument the yes. day of the exam. So, so it's, another it's up to you. Okay. Right. You can buy, you can purchase new instruments for, for them to be very sharp if okay. you'd like. Great. Okay. So here it is. No PPE. Well, you talked about it, right? You have your regular PPEs. No PPE. Yes. Regular PPE. Everything okay. must be on, even your loops, because the examiners, they went to two examinees and they told them that they had to have their loops. They didn't have it. So they were fine with just putting on the face shield, but the loops, the mask, the gown, and the gloves, all of them have to be worn. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, so you are assigned lower right or lower left, no maxillary. That's a, yeah. No maxilla. Okay. The only thing you'll be doing on the maxilla is calculus detection. Mm -hmm. I got the lower left and, you know, someone else may get the lower right, but every, for the scaling, only on the mandible. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And I just want to clarify, this is for the ADEX exam. I know there's a CETA exam as well. That's a different region. So we're just going to focus here on the ADEX exam. If some of you had questions about the CETA exam, sorry, you know, our students specialize right now in the ADEX exam. Okay. So, well, maybe we can get someone from the CETA um, who took the exam as well. If you have more questions, is that okay with you? All right. So we talked about some ultrasonic. You ladies already did cover that. Mm -hmm. However, um, do you discourage it or do you, do you think, I mean, you had a different experience, it seems like. So 
any kind of general advice for the students or whether you should use it or not, or how we feel different on a patient when you use ultrasonic on, well, on the fake patient? Bobby, I to did use it for a long time. Um, I used the highest power again, and then I went back to the lower, lower, and then I went back to the highest and the lower, and then I start to scale for probably 15 minutes. Okay. But that's does it feel why different though when you try to use it on this fake tooth? Does it feel different? It does feel different, very different. I felt like it would just glide, you know, off. But oh, for me, in my, yeah, in my experience, I hand scaled majority of the time. I did use some of the ultrasonic maybe to break it up a bit, but mm -hmm. the ultrasonic, it came more in handy just to flush out the black dust, like the black debris. That's what I use the ultrasonic mostly for. For okay. me, I hand scaled majority of the time. I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. But it's, but it's like, your preference. Whatever you feel is working for you at that moment. Okay. All right. So, you know, there's no right or wrong here. No it's right or wrong. Practice too. It's going to be really just everything. Yeah. Great. Okay. Probing. Is it similar to real calculus? Like when I, she said, when I practice on the type of dot, it just slides, you know, because that's the type of dot. But does right. it feel different when you probe? With the probe, like with the probe, you actually, it actually almost feels real. Like you feel the resistancy. Mm -hmm. You know, some people had a, um, they were concerned about that as well because they were like, oh my gosh, this is a mannequin. How are they going to do like the, the junctional epithelium? How are they going to put that yeah. there? You know, but I felt it. It felt real. Uh -huh. They made it similar, you know, as possible. So I felt the resistancy. Okay, okay. Just make sure you don't have tissue trauma in there. Oh. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. Um, there's a question about tissue trauma. I'm going to ask it right now then. What does tissue trauma look like? It's like when you use your instrument or your ultrasonic, you're going to tie, uh, tie it. Like you cut, you cut the gums basically. That's what tissue trauma is. Yeah, you and, and then usually when you're doing it on a live patient, if the examiner see that you cut the gums on the live patient, they actually take off points for that. Right. But in this case, it, it, cause you know, the material is cheap. So I ended up did ripping the gums a bit, but there's no deduction off of that. None. Uh, You're not going to get points taken off. Okay, great. So we had a question about CETA. So CETA seems like it's different. They take points off if you have like tissue trauma. Mm -hmm. So luckily those who are taking the ADEX exam. Yeah. <laughs> okay, those who are taking that. the ADEX, you're not going to get the points off. Okay. No. Okay. Good. Okay. Again, we're clarifying this is ADEX. Okay. Yeah. As right. well as the tooth trauma, they are not going to. Okay. Yeah. Make a little ding on the tooth. That's okay as well. Yeah. That's okay. Some people wow. said they almost popped off the tooth too. Oh yeah. Really focusing just on that fake calculus. That's it. That's it. And the calculus okay. detection and the probing measurements. That's yeah, it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. A few more questions here. Um, how did you mount the bath for the ultrasonic to collect water? How do we mount it? Yeah, like how did you collect water from the mannequin? Or is it the oh, I, I used the suction. Okay. You still use the suction in the mouth. I, I treat it as if it was still a real patient. Okay. I, you, I was scaling and I had my suction in the mouth as well. Okay. But again, the suction, there is a suction already included in the throat of the mannequin. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you just turn it on and it kind of just sucks it out already. You don't even have to turn it off. It's there, there. Oh, okay. And you know when you move, it moves with you. Okay, nice. Okay, okay. So yeah, that explains. I think someone maybe at the school they don't have that system, so maybe they use a bath to collect water or something. So maybe that's why they were asking. But in this case, it seems like it was already set up. Yeah. Um, is it visible if you are leaving capsules behind? Because you said it's black, but I think in your presentation you said you can't really tell unless you take it out, right? Right, unless you like pull down the gums yeah. a little bit, you'll yeah, be yeah. able to see. You can use your probe and instrument and you okay. can try and stretch out the gums a bit to clinically see. But okay. other than that, yeah. Okay, um, a few more over here. Did they leave you at the exam? Or do they leave you alone when you they do. Your work? Okay. They do, no one is looking over your shoulder. No instructors are okay. there. No one to call for calculus check, all on your own. Perfect, perfect, okay. And there's, so the question was, there, are there two mannequins for probing and for cleaning that's German, but that's not the case, no. right? No. Everything One. is on the same arch except subgingival calculus detection, which is on the maxima. Yeah. Maxima. Okay. yeah. Same one a mannequin. Okay. Was probing straightforward, Raquel? I think you said that it kind of felt yeah, like straightforward. What we're used to. Okay. Um, and then, um, is it easy for the teeth to fall out, Doris? I mean, it, 
my teeth were pretty stable and sturdy, but for others, they said that they almost popped off That's their right. teeth. And yeah. I'm like, oh man, you guys are very strong, but my teeth were fine. They were intact. Especially the interiors. I mean, I had a lot of tooth trauma there because again, we have sharp instruments. So when you're scaling, you know, you're so stressed, you don't even think about it, but it's fine. At the end of the day, it's fine. And just in case the tune pops out, like what would you do? Did you call someone saying like this was not strongly? I, I would have done it. I probably would have been like, hey, my tooth popped out, but, or maybe try and put it back in if I could. Yeah. So that's what I probably would have done. But, but my it's not going to happen. It, it didn't happen to yeah. any of us. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Well, so yeah, guys, I mean, one thing is that I think what we can take is we need to make sure the calculus is off, but you know, we know by just treating patients that more pressure itself is not the most helpful. It's mm -hmm. like the angulations, like having it sharp, you know, you mm -hmm. gotta make sure about things like that, not just applying more force. So I think that helps also understand what we really need to focus on when we're in our examination. Okay. Just a few things over here. Um, Ben just wanted to clarify, the examiner will assign which teeth for us to scale. That's yes, right. they'll give you the form. Your form will be yeah, right yeah. there with all so the numbers like, plugged in. Uh, you know, if it's demandable, it's like 18, whatever, like it's yes. written there, you just follow that. It seems like there's a lot less teeth than the real patient examination, like according to Yeah, the it's just one quadrant, because in a yeah. live patient, it's one quadrant and two teeth. It's it just is. one quadrant for this one. And you okay. have third molar, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but make sure just make sure you clean the whole quad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just one last question. This is Amanda. She's asking, are three molars present in the quad? Yeah. Yeah. All the molars are there. Okay. 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 Make sure there is no calculus in the D style of two, uh -huh. up to number 32 or okay. 17. Okay. Uh, we didn't have it. Deidre too. I didn't have, but mm -hmm. yeah. Sure. So. Okay. Thank you, ladies. I mean, I think there was like a ton of questions. I was trying to write them as fast as I could. Um, one last question. Sorry, Jacqueline said, were you able to go in and pick a day to take the exam or did you have to email to sign up? Because she said, I don't see where to sign up to take the mannequin exam. Okay, so what happens is when you go on the CDCA, you just go up and then you pay for it. And then obviously your information will be processed. Then if you don't really need to have a recommended date to, uh, recommend a date like if you're fine with either Saturday or Sunday eventually you will see your date pop up okay so it seems yeah. like you pay first and then you will see a date yeah they're, they're gonna assign the date for you okay okay so kind of you need to make your flexible schedule like your schedule needs to be flexible for the yeah. next like yeah if you're fine with Saturday or Sunday boom yeah. they'll just give you the date but me and Barbara we specific specifically had to request for Sunday okay exactly. thank you and there was no recession on the mannequin. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, thank you, ladies. This was wonderful. I mean, can we just give a little thank you here for our, yeah. our students here, Barbara and Deidre from Miami Dade in Florida, and just sharing their real experience. Like, honestly, this is one of the first time we're really inviting students to student our to really talk about the experience. So this was wonderful. This encouraged me actually to really open the door to all of our students because you guys are a wealth of resources. I'm trying my best on my side, but really like nothing compares to what literally just happened, right? How long was that? About two weeks ago or so that you emailed me, Barbara? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that, that was just, I just got, I mean, it was for me, you know, Having no resources, it's very frustrating. Deidre felt the same. Yeah. She got many messages, messages on her Instagram, people asking. So it just pop up. Hey. And you give all the time opportunities to students to do better, to be knowledgeable. Yeah. And we thank you for that, Claire, a lot. Yes, thank you so much. So don't worry, guys. You're going to pass. This is a very easy and simple and straightforward exam. I know, yeah, only a few teeth, like just, cat, just detection up there, few teeth to scale, two hour, you're in and out, no need to worry about. I love that you're on medical history, blood pressure. Yeah, also we couldn't sterilize our instrument after we have to leave. So yeah. oh, really? later if you need that. So you sterilize it later, like when you can? Yeah, when you can. Bag yeah. it and you, okay. But at least you know it's not like real bacteria on it from a lot yeah, of yeah, patient's mouth. Yeah, yeah. And also, it's not mandatory to have your instrument sterilized. I know this sounds crazy. Uh, really? But 
I mean, make sure it wasn't on the patient's mouth, but if you okay. work on it on the typo, then it's they fine. are going to allow that. I, I mean, at least in Florida, but okay. we all had our instruments sterilized. Okay, I get it. Okay, wow. Okay, so ladies, I mean, this has been a wonderful hour. I know Barbara and Deidre, you have some place to go as well. And just to wrap up, okay, so there's going to be a recorded session. It's not going to be available for forever. For the next week, though, if you missed it because you had a clinic or something, I think we all understand you have a life. So it's going to be available. Again, those students have taken their time, own time to talk to you today. Um, so you're going to get a link within the next 48 hours saying, hey, here's the recording. And, you know, I just want to know just a little bit more about you ladies since you really took the, the wonderful time to be here. So Barbara, you are from France, because I could, we could tell from like the accent the whole time, right? I didn't mention the beginning, but so when did you come here to uh, the United States? So I would, first I was born in the United States, believe it or not, but um, I left when I was one year old. Okay. And I left after my high school diploma when I was 18 by myself without knowing English. Oh, wow. Not even a word, two luggage. Two luggages? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's possible. If you really want to do it, you can go through it. It's hard. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Deidre was correcting my English. I learned a lot with her because it's actually in the dental hygiene program that I really make friends, mm -hmm. you know. And then I came and, I mean, a lot of people, each, each of us has a story. Mm -hmm. But if you really want to make it, you can make it. Mm -hmm. I learned Spanish here, English. I That's good. So. Wow. And so you, you decided to come here and start dental hygiene right away or did you take some time to figure it out? Yeah, no, I wanted to do dental hygiene because uh, my dad was an orthodontist in Switzerland. So I grew up in a dental office basically. And so I saw the dental hygienist uh -huh. there. And so I knew I wanted to work in the dental field. Uh -huh. So in France, that doesn't exist. Right, the uh, dentist does the hygiene, right, over here? Yeah, but it's not even a good job, let's be honest. Right. It's just it's polish right. and that's it. Yeah. So I said, yeah, why not? Oh, amazing. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, Barbara had a very interesting story. She's from France. Where, when France were you before? Uh, Marseille, which is uh, south of uh, French uh, Riviera, no, near, near to Cannes, Saint-Tropez, uh, Italy, you know? <laughs> yeah, the southern part uh, of that. Uh, Marseille. I think it's been the background of many movies as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Awesome. So that, that was Barbara, you know, uh, she was originally from France. And if you guys don't know, I actually grew up in France in Paris nice. for, um, until I was a teenager. So um, I was there for a long time. And then I went to Korea and then went to the U.S. So I did oh, move cool. around a lot. So, um, you know, I was happy to see some international students or international students who kind of just pursued their dream in a different country. So that was yeah, awesome. and clear. So you speak fluently French, right? Yes, yes, yes. Perfect. Oh, nice. Merci aujourd'hui. Oui. aujourd'hui. I'm studying for the board. And Deidre is pushing me a little bit. I do. And Deidre, I mean, you have an amazing positive attitude. So I think we all got this from you. Yes. Everybody feel, I mean, I hope you all feel the same as well. So Deidre, tell us a little bit more about yourself. So yes, I was born and raised in Miami, Florida. And then my parents, they're both from the Bahamas. And then I uh -huh. was interested in dental hygiene because it's such a warding career, such a great profession. I love dealing with the patients. Yeah. And then I already have my bachelor's. So I want to pursue my master's pretty soon. Mm -hmm. And then I really want to like put my skills into leadership and like mm -hmm. public speaking and really help out in the community. I really want to help the underserved. So. Deidre, I think you have it. Oh, thank you. I, 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 I you know, I, I see, I, I coach speakers as well sometimes. Awesome. Um, but anyhow, I do see there's something here. So Deidre, continue. Um, education as well is awesome. Yes. I think there's, you have so much to offer as well. So. Awesome. You know, thank you. Really and I'll come to you for the coaching. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I, you know, I'm very honored to have our students who are now new grads really follow their dream because then our hygiene is so diverse now. There are yeah. 500 million directions that you could go. It's just up to you of what right. you want to, what you want to do. Okay. Yes. And, you, you know, so Barbara too came from very, very long, you know, distance country and she has family on the other side again and is pursuing because she saw in France that it was not the same 
quality of dental hygiene that you know they do so anyways wonderful ladies i'm so thankful again and we will have this for probably another at least hundreds of students who are not able to join us today yeah and i just wish you the best okay barbara when you know you let me know if you need more help Deidre, you're done but if you want to pursue some other career direction you let me know too okay yeah oh, i will thank you so much claire especially to you with student rdh i'm like an advocate for your program uh, i stream okay. student rdh <laughs> I tell everyone, just go to Student RDH. Forget the other reviews. Student oh RDH. My God, this is awesome. Just thank, thank you so you. much. We hope to continue supporting all of you, okay? But ladies, yes. have an amazing day. You too. And, Good luck, everyone. Uh, yeah, and thank you on behalf of everybody who's going to see this in the future as well. All right. Thank, thank you. you for giving us this opportunity, Claire. We yes, if you need more speakers, we're here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Daniel. Again, this has been amazing. Thank Don't you. let everybody go here and have a wonderful day. You too. Bye. Bye. All right, everyone. Thank you again for being here. Um, you know, I love seeing some comments here saying thank you for arranging, but really the, the big job was our students, our new grads who have been so helpful. They volunteer their time to do this. So if you have a topic that you want to volunteer about, hey, I can talk about this, or I want to share my experience, or I can write, you know, if you want to write it in a blog format saying I've done this in the community, or this is how I learn, we're totally open. And I'm going to do those things more and more because I'm realizing it's not just my expertise that counts, it's everybody. So I want to really make this an open community group where we learn every year from each other, okay? So I'm going to end the webinar right now. And I hope all of you have an amazing day, okay? Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.